Welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be looking at a couple of products that TomTop have sent me. So let me say at the very top of the video, thank you TomTop for sending me these two things. They have been fun to play with. The first is a HJY3 frame. So yes, finally we're going to have a tricopter on the channel. As th those of you that have watched the channel for a while will know, I'm quite a fan of quadcopters and hexcopters. And also a multifunction power distribution board, which is a great idea that not only will allow us to push the electricity around the model, but it will also allow us to do things like supply the plus five volts to the craft. So if we're using Optio speed controllers, that'll take care of that. And also it provides voltage and current sensing as well, which could be very useful if we're gonna use a control board uh, that's going to take advantage of that. In this video, what I want to do is unbox, build, and then do a review of it at the end and uh, kind of go through this step by step. I'll put descriptions for both of these pieces below in the video, and then if you're interested, you can go and get these from TomTop. So the entire kit comes in one relatively small box and uh, you can see at the end, it has the HJY3 frame listed. If we open the box, First thing we find is the PDB, the power distribution board that comes with the kit. This is a very basic one and the tail assembly. And it also comes with a metal gear servo. There's also a set of instructions. They're not very detailed, but if you're used to putting flat pack furniture together, you'll be able to follow this. There is also, is this is the multifunction power distribution board that we talked about. Um, comparing it to the normal one, obviously it's a lot simpler. There aren't any of the electronics on here. The nice thing about the clever power distribution board is it does provide 5.1 volts at about 3 amps and it's a switching BEC, so it's nice and efficient. One of the things looking at this manual that's going to be worthwhile doing as part of the video is actually to show you some more of the steps of putting it together. So what I'll do now is we'll actually lay out the pieces and we'll start to figure out how this thing goes into one piece. So here's all the pieces laid out on the mat. We have the arms at the top and then we have the body bottom left hand corner and the tail bottom right hand corner. And as you can see here, we have the motor mounts for the arms and the center plates as well. So what we'll do is we'll build one then the other. The rear tail is a little bit impressive. We have the servo mounting plates that will go in between each side of the tail to allow us to mount the, the, the pivot and the servo. Uh, and again, we're gonna use that MG90 servo that came in the kit. And these are little servo mounting pieces. Um, I quite like these. There's a little shims made out of carbon fiber that go behind the main plate and just provide a little bit of spacing. I think that's quite a nice little touch. There are two hardware bags full of screws. Uh, the screws aren't actually put into any particular bag. So um, what you'll find at the end is that you'll have loads left over, which is great. I like that. I never like having just enough because I always end up dropping one and losing one in the carpet. And then at the bottom left hand corner, we have that top and bottom plate. So let me build the first arm and we'll have a look at what that looks like. First thing I want to say about this is that I am impressed with the finish of the kit. It is a nicely built kit, it's good quality carbon fiber, and the edges are nicely prepared. So there's none of the weird marks or uh, burrs or sharp edges that you'd expect on a value for money kit. Um, it has gone together really well as well. Normally I'd expect to have the needle files on hand to kind of sort out things that don't quite fit, but it all snapped together with almost like a positive lock. So whoever designed this and whoever built it has really thought about it. The screws too are good quality. With some of the cheaper kits I've had in the past, they're little aluminium screws and they strip really quickly. These are much better than some of the ones that I've used and it does make a very sturdy arm. When it's all bolted together like this, even though there's only several bits of carbon fiber and a couple of spacers, it really is very, very stiff. Um, so I'm kind of impressed with, uh, with that. I'm gonna see what the tail's like as well. So the next thing I guess then is make the other one. Just a point, so far I've only used a one and a half millimeter hex driver and a Phillips screwdriver. So I'm not having to use any exotic tools to put this thing together. 
So the tail section. So the first thing I want to just point out here is this little piece is the lower mounting plate for the pivot that will be the rear motor mount. And also we have this plate here for the servo. So what I'm going to do is finish this tail off. We'll put the pivot together in a few minutes and then we'll have a look. Just wanted to show you this. Just come to the point now where we're going to attach the front arms onto the body. And there are actually two lengths of spacer. Both of these are aluminium. One is a 20 millimeter and one is a 23 millimeter because the carbon fiber is one and a half milli. Uh, the nice thing is, is you use the 20 millimeter inside and then you use the 23 longer post with the hexagonal ends to actually lock the arm in place. So you could build this model and give yourself a little bit more room on the cables and then have it so that by undoing a couple of screws you can move that pillar along slightly, free up the arms and fold them back against the body. So it's worthwhile us taking a little bit of time and looking at how the tail assembly fits together. And what we have is obviously the SG90 is screwed in already as we've already looked at. And then we have the piece that the motor bolts onto. The nice thing is, is one end of it is very strongly ridged and that will provide a very positive lock onto the teeth that's on the end of the servo output shaft. So let's just put the top and bottom bits together so you can see how to do that. So we need to align them and then this pin that comes in the kit, we have to slide it in. We have to push it down as far as we can. And then the little grub screw that comes in the kit, it just put that in the end to stop that working loose. And there we have our assembly ready to fit into the end of the tail before we finished. So here's the frame all built all together. We don't have any electronics or anything in here. It's just the carbon fiber pieces and the servo. So this is everything that's come in the kit so far. The mounting options that we've got though for the control board and PDB, we have a couple here. There's pre-drilled holes. So we can either put the power distribution board at the bottom and the flight controller at the top or vice versa. And I've decided that I'm not going to use the multifunction power distribution board this time because what I'll do is I'll actually use a CC3D flight controller that I have in the spares bin to actually turn this into a fully function model. So for me I'm going to put the power distribution board at the bottom that will keep all of the cables and all of the uh, voltages away from the elements and then I'm going to put the CC3D on top and the reason I'll do it that way is it's easier for me to see the CC3D status light when I'm looking at it in the daylight. There are lots of spare screws. I thought there was a couple of extras from looking at the description and reading the notes but there are even more than I expected. We have the nylon mounts here that's so great that you actually get all the nylon spaces that you need to mount a power distribution board and a flight controller and you also have a lot of spare screws of the kind that go into the arms and these aren't spare because I've missed something out these are extra bits that you get in the bag and that's great because you always find that the first couple of flights if you haven't quite managed to nip up any of the screws they will manage to come out and you'll lose them in the grass as you're flying around so it's great to have spares. So I've just popped the top off here, so here's the power distribution board. What I'm going to do is actually mount the electronic speed controllers on the arms, so it'll be on the side of the rear, and then we're also going to put the motors onto the arms, and uh, pretty straightforward here, we're just going to be able to screw through. I'm probably going to have to take the bottom plate off the arm, just so I can screw the motor in, and then put the top and bottom plate back together. And that hopefully should be the build. So let me finish that and we'll come back and we'll have a look at the model with all of the electronics on together and I'll go through my final thoughts. So here it is all built and in one piece. So we've actually wired up the motors, we've put everything together and we have our little uh, tilting motor at the back to pirouette. We're running, as we said, a CC3D. I've got that all cabled up going into a little orange RX receiver at the bottom. In summary, I think it's a nice frame. I really like it. I think it's well put together. As we said at the beginning, the way that the carbon fiber is finished is really nice. 
and it slots together in a really nice positive way. I haven't had to get the needle files out for any of this build, which is unusual for this kind of craft. There are a couple of extra things that I would probably suggest that you order where you are getting this. Uh, first of all is you're going to need a battery strap uh, just to put the battery on the bottom. It has got the holes to guide a battery strap through, so I would order one of those while you're doing it. Second thing that's probably worthwhile getting hold of is um, think about an anti-vibration mount. Now as you can see there are the hardware to actually mount whatever flight controller your heart desires on the top. I've actually mounted mine on um, anti-vibration foam here so I haven't used those screws which is why they're left over. However I would always recommend for these new generation of flight controllers it's worthwhile grabbing yourself some kind of anti-vibration mount and mounting that to the top of the chassis. Final thing then is in terms of the tools that we've used to put this together, really standard stuff. So we've had a uh, one and a half and a two millimeter hex driver and we've had a little Phillips screwdriver for those little screws in places where they're recessed, which is a nice touch. Apart from that and the soldering iron, then you will put all that together. So if you're a builder already, and this is something that you are interested in, I think this represents a nice kit to get you started into tricopters. The thing that we didn't use in this video was the power distribution board. So this power distribution board, I think is a really nice idea. Not only does it provide the power connections for a quad or your hex or whatever. It also provides the power out and the signal bits and pieces that will fit into boards like an APM. Now I've not used that on this simply because at the moment it's not an APM flight controller but if I was going to put an APM 3.1 or something like that on here then I'd absolutely be using this. So for the money I think this is a cute little addition to add in which kind of takes away the need for all of that heartache regarding additional power modules and pieces and kind of takes care of that in a way that reduces the overall weight. So I'll put the links to both of these in the bottom in the description so you can um, find them and order them if you'd like to follow the bits and pieces. Thank you again to TomTop for sending this to me and letting me play with this. Tricopters as I've said is something I've been interested in getting into and something that you as subscribers ask about a lot so the ability to actually build one to use in videos is great. And on that subject, for those of you that want to see how a tricopter is set up with something like a CC3D, I will be adding a video to the CC3D series, and I'll put a link to that in the description when it's done as well, so you can go along and you can follow how you set this up. Obviously, the only real difference here is that we have a servo to consider, and we only have three motors, but that does mean that there's an extra little few bits and pieces that we need to do in order to make sure that the servo is moving in the right way and isn't reversed. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.